Dash 2 the Abominable. We are in part 8 now. Of our playthrough. <clears throat> and last time, we started chapter 5 of the story. And then went down to the docks. And Super was like, you ready to go to England? And I was like, brother... Uh, give me a second, because I have not finished all the crap in the world we have there is to do. Um, <clears throat> which, I still haven't, but I have finished all the stuff in the sub-region, uh, or in the first region, like the intro region, because Norway's actually split into two, uh, sub -regions. So I, ga I grabbed all the crap from the start region, and about half of the crap from the tough region. So now... <clears throat> I've done everything I can do, I think. I might be able to squeeze a little bit more out, but long story short, I'm ready to go. Um, before we go, though, I did want to put on my cool stuff. I, I don't want to invest in upgrading anything just yet. I want to... Well, I should be upgrading this stuff. Are you ready to set sail, Eivor? I am ready. Let us take to the water and leave unbothered while we have the chance. That chance has passed. Look! Fate flies on swifter wings than we. King Harold's banner. Uh-oh. Looks like we might be stuck here for a little bit after all. Sigurd! What is this assembly? What are you planning? An exit, father. As graceful as I can. For if I cannot be king in the land of my birth, I will start a new saga. In England. Nonsense. Your place is here, son, at my side. There will be other <coughs> victories nope. soon. Other glories. My choice is made, father. Do not hope otherwise. There's nothing for me here. I must go make my name in the world. A 
And you have plundered Fornberg's resources, I see. You leave nothing behind but your honor. You left me no choice. I entered the Alving a prince. I left the son of a Jarl. There are always choices, Sigurd. I will not stand between you and yours, but I do not accept it. <sighs> Seventeen winters ago, I opened my door to you, Eivor. Rob you? And now, your Bruh. only thanks is to rob me? I'm the I one that killed the dude and to took the, the stuff. Sad old elk. Do not carry his words with you to England. He brought this day upon himself. I know. <laughs> we got the supplies. Time to go. We get to my seat. The time for tears is over, you weeping sacks of wool. Put some muscle into those pools. Ration your strength, dog. We have an ocean to cross. All right, you lazy back routes. Sigurd, what's our course? The sons of Ragnar Check established it. a settlement near the coast. We set sail for them. Ragnar, yes. sing a song to lift our hood. To rouse the gods! Inspire a mighty fart from Thor to speed us on our way! Here we go. An ocean lies before us, Eivor. And on its far side, a new kingdom awaits. You know England well from your travels. I spend the season in their kingdom of Mercia, a temperate land, lush That's and wild. Nice By now, the sons of Ragnar will have claimed its heart. Do we mean to join their army? They will join ours. In time, we all chased? of England will know of Raven Clan and the glory we brought to that fractured land. So to England, glory and destiny. To England, to England, Lord of Valhalla. Eight parts later, I'm done with the, <laughs> with the prologue section of this freaking game. Oh man. Uh oh. Oh no, this chick. The real life outside of the animus stuff. Oh, this Layla chick. She was. Rude in Origins, which is outright mean in Odyssey. So, let's see how that character arc completes. Can't end in a good spot based off of its current trajectory from the last two years. I think it's actually called the Spear of Immortality. But, uh, In a lecture really... at the University of Cambridge, Dr. Sierka told a worried audience that scientists have few answers for them. Oh, she's Since the mass coronal the ejection wilderness. of 2012, the strength of the Earth's magnetic field has increased by a factor of 50,000. This has resulted in huge disturbances in radio and satellite communications, dangerous bands of radiation around the poles, and as we can all see from our window, an aurora borealis that never burns away. Unfortunately, we are stumped as to why this is happening. And if we cannot find an answer soon, it may change the way we live, the way we communicate, even the way we evolve forever. Dr. Sierka went on to say, Bought you more electrolytes? Oh, new and improved citrus flavor. Thanks, Sean. Isn't that Desmond's dad? Bring Desmond back. 
with this chicken over here. I know he died at the end of, what, Assassin's Creed 3, 4, something like that? How do we fix this? How are you the key to everything? Oh, snap. You're a long way from home, Eivor. Hmm. Beautiful, but it's not normal. I can sit, just chill by the fire. I should do this more often. Relaxing. Ew, I see wind turbines They're obstructing my view. Ew. Look at them. There's like five of them over there. Disgusting. But they do fit your population. Uh, so that's nice. I'm not going anywhere. Not yet. Oh. Probably bought this at a coffee shop somewhere in Concord. So yeah, this whole area just seems to... Whoa! This area just seems to be justifying... Another satellite. Damn. Someone's got mail. Oh, that's cool. An invitation to a fair in Concord. Bring your best crop and you may win a prize. Tempting. Layla, you can't run away from this. No, I can't go this okay. I thought I could go see the car. An outhouse? walk into town than use this well then where are you going to the bathroom I can't drive anywhere I can't leave and you don't use the outhouse I'm pretty sure whatever you're doing is more disgusting than just using the some quality stuff here oh mint tea is not actually tea Bex it's an infusion. It's really just dirty, minty water. I don't care what you call it, Sean. Did you buy any? Of course I did, love. Hey, sorry about pulling you out. The generator was sputtering. That's fine. I needed air. How is the Animus data stream? Comfortable? Felt pretty stable after a while. Good. Just give me a sec and you can jump back in. Yeah, because all this other stuff out here is boring. Like, I know it's the point of the entire series. It's just, I just can't get past how boring it is. Another satellite came down. Did you see? I did. One of Abstergo's. That's good. Well, most of North America just lost its GPS service, so it depends what you mean by good, really. Right. Even when we win, we lose. Okay, we're all set. Whenever you're ready, you can jump back in. You mind if I put some music on? Go for it. Cool. Sean has been busy. Audio fragments in the Okay. Hello, Layla. 
Sean, what do you make of the grave out there? Well, it overturns a few hundred years of scholarship about the first Europeans to set foot in North America. Apart from that, it's just a bunch of muddy bones, isn't it? North America? Can we talk about this thing on my neck for a second? Ah, the mood stabilizer. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's not harmful, is it? I mean, I feel good. Every girl but needs a mood I want to make sure there's no side effects. Directly implanted in It's only blocking brain. outside signals, a passive effect. So the staff. Even if you're offended by that? You know, mess with you. you. Half of you that are even offended kind of agree. Sean, what happened last year? I, I had no control over that. I, I tried to resist. I understand. And your old team? Maybe they don't. Oh, that's right. She like But we've somebody. seen that sort of thing before. And Still, the, uh, if you want to work with us and get obviously. to the bottom of why the world is about to end for the second time in eight years, then you wear that thing until we say otherwise. William's orders. I know. It's not a problem. William it's just a few more respect. weeks, yeah? Just until we figure this out. <clears throat> you're right. I know you're right. Okay. Good talk. Don't know why I'm over here. So much you gonna cook. put this in the fridge, Sean? Of course. In half a minute. Remember, tomatoes go on the counter, not the fridge. What? Since when? Please enjoy your stay. Remember, all the garbage must be packed out, and please water the plants once a day. Yeah, I won't remember that. Sean, don't forget to water the plants while I'm under, okay? I'll add it to the calendar and tattoo it on my leg. I went through hell to bring you here. It had better be worth it. That's quite nice. Soothing. Feeling okay? Better. But I'm worried that it could happen again. The two data streams. I can't promise it won't. I barely understand it myself. It felt like two minds fighting over one brain. It hurt like a shotgun to the head. Right. There's something about this Viking's DNA sample that feels dense, noisy. Mm -hmm. Could it be the staff interfering somehow? How do you mean? My headaches, my temper. They started the day I got that thing. I hope you're not making excuses for, you know, your friend. Jesus, no. I'm not. Sorry. The one Just that you killed? Take it easy. <laughs> and if you feel yourself slipping again, let us know. I'm trying. Just call her I out. I really there, am. Bro. If you feel yourself slipping, I could snap at any moment. Your neck, that is. Be nice to sleep in a real bed when this is over. Yeah, that's well, not gonna happen. <clears throat> uh, okay, I think all that's left to do is look at all the laptop. Do -do -do -do. Let's have a look. Oh, staff of eating. Eden, is that what it's called? The Staff of Hermes, acquired by Cassie. Oh, it remembered who I played as? Oh, that's cool. Uh, this staff, one of many UC staves, is the first floor. Uh, 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 it's been known to extend the life of its bearers. You see that Hermes presumed to have the ability to resist to the features and could, of course, be the states. It has not been verified if the staff has the ability to resurrect the dead, but this seems unlikely based on its good features. Appears to work by reading and copying its bears to the name to ensure perfect replication on a large scale. It's able to detect the one copies of player pairs so long as its bearer remains within direct contact. It has been used as a weapon and frequently possibly by taking advantage of the tremendous power it draws from wireless energy lattice. Okay. The staff has also acted as a conduit for the personality called Lithia. Oh, I remember her. It's not known if this personality is her original consciousness or simulation. Though most neuroscientists will call this a distinction without a difference. As of early 2019, the entity known as Alethea has made no further attempts to contact me. As yet, my purpose as the so called heir of memories as Alethea dealt me remains unclear. Okay. Messengers. Who 
Rebecca, before we met at the site, I want you to see these. Last week, I reviewed the blocks from the town of Bayek. We came across some old notes. Oh, Bayek was the origins guy, I think. In the years I explored Cleopatra's Egypt, I stumbled across six temples, most of which were buried beneath pharaonic tomb sites. Each temple contained a new message, clearly meant for one with the ability to read genetic memories. I was the lucky one. I don't believe they were intended for Bayek himself, as he seemed wholly unaware of the messages as they played. They may have been encoded in a way that only someone with an animus could see them. It's been a few years since I last heard the messages, so my memory's foggy. But <clears throat> the notes I scribbled down have a clarity that I trust. It might be something to all this. I don't know. Often I grasp outside of my area of expertise. I'm enthusiastic, but often no, I'll never know if, you, if something else strikes you. Uh, message one. Layers upon layers of reality, each blurring into the next, which is real, which is not, but none are real, whatever we know is false. We ran thousands of simulations searching for the right version, searching for Desmond. Each one of them felt real, but there's no way of truly knowing, is there? Not for sure. Anything can be simulated, and finding the answer could mean erasure. Using the assassin maxim, nothing is true. Must be careful not to confuse truth with facts, however, a language game you always lose. Though we may stumble in our attempts to interpret it, the world, the universe, reality, what have you, it is always out there. I believe that simulated or no. We can imagine a dozen nested simulations and each one on the level of itself would constitute a full reality. Wolfram via Conway suggests the universe is a giant cellular automata. And further, there is a point where the difference between simulated and real is meaningless. If the universe were a simulation, it wouldn't matter. Simulation qua simulation itself would be real, and therefore everything within it would be real within the confines of the simulation. Say, a scientist were able to simulate pain by inducing a few neurons to fire and no physical harm. I am in pain, the subject says. No, you only believe you are, says the scientist. This is meaningless, as is this. You thought you were in pain, but you were mistaken. Okay. Uh, message two, no surprise, you were designed to have boundaries after all, and one cannot speak of that which one cannot conceive. The code, equations that define life, they are nestled deep within every star and every moat of dust. Every second that passes a word, a symbol, all part of an intricate yet simple language existing within the framework of time itself. It is the one rule which applies to us all, immutable and escapable. We know this, humans were the instruments of an earlier species, the Isu, resist the temptation to say superior, different. They were better suited to some tasks, ill suited to others, possessed of a mind we cannot know. But what does but that does not get us anywhere. What is it like to be an Isu? What is it like to be a bat? The implication that the Isu could read time is interesting, but if humans could read time, would it necessarily be in the same manner and for the same purpose? Whether constructed or evolved or a little bit of both as we are, it cannot be said to have been built to achieve the same ends. A round disc on its edge is a wheel, on its side a plate. How we use something can often determine its value and its perceived purpose. <clears throat> Message three, break the code, break the node. These walls tell of a tragic story, a story we transcribed on our structures, on our artifacts, a story we could not alter. The mystery defying us in plain sight, we tried. Our scholars and scientists, poets and physicists, bright minds, rebellious hearts, they all tried so hard to bring about change. They, we all failed. None could change what we discovered. The story is written into the walls of these rooms. The reader has no power. He is but an observer. But the author, the author invents the future. The author owns the future. The Toba catastrophe, a supervolcanic event paired with a mass coronal ejection, was the beginning of the end for the Isu. It changed the Earth's environment, lowered its available oxygen level levels, and generally effed things up. The Isu never recovered. By our estimations, the last remaining Isu died just a century after the catastrophe. From that point forward, humans, their creation ruled the roost. This disaster was not unforeseen. Easter scientists had known about their impending doom for years, perhaps decades before the catastrophe mm -hmm. occurred. To protect themselves, they worked feverishly to find a solution. Six methods they tried, but due to a toxic combination of hubris, political infighting, and bad luck, all six failed. The final method proved the most promising and was nearly complete when tragedy struck. It was this method, method that Desmond Miles revived when he saved the world from a second solar flare in December 2012. This voice laments the compounded failure of their species to save themselves, but the truth is broader than that. They, with Desmond, saved us. Success deferred. Uh, then this message, break the code, break the node, insistent, and barely puzzling. Okay? Message four, linear continuity is a simulation that allows for variations within the linear continuity. There are nodes, choke points, moments where algorithms converge. The flows of superposed possibilities to a single moment where only one absolute truth is possible. Paths are fluid, continuous, nodes are static, changeless, and the wave function collapses the paths into nodes 
which branch out again and again and again. Then you feel the wave collapsing, trying to course correct Desmond's act of defiance. The incoming node means the world to end. The algorithms have been carving the flow of possibilities towards that end for over 100 years. Collapse the wave. Well, outside my area of expertise, must contact someone who knows this stuff better, but what it seems to be saying, the structure of space-time, the universe, is built in such a way that certain events or clusters of events are compelled to occur, a bottleneck through which space-time flows and one nearly impossible to avoid. This is something, there is something about this catastrophe, the one Desmond averted in 2012, that compels it to return. Indifferent to our fear or pain, it is a tidal wave rippling across the sea of space. It crashed once against the dike, and that stopped it for a time, but the sea rears back for another strike and another and another. That gives some clarity to what is happening now all around us, but it remains unclear how to change it, especially from within an animus, a simulation within a simulation. <clears throat> Message 5. Reality is a mathematical model which gets solved over and over again by the observer. Your thoughts are computations, and they render this world for you to call your own. Not all processors are alike. Different brains produce different realities. Variations go from the subtle to the drastic. Your mind defines how much you can taste, how much you can feel, how much you can understand. Perception defines perspective. We designed you and made sure to engineer your senses so you could perceive just what we needed you to, neither more nor less. There are parts of time we preferred you to remain blind to. It was a necessity. If we could suddenly see time, that would not guarantee the same perception the ease you possess. Let us speak of time as an entity, if we may. Let us say that time is a perceivable fact in the same way that light is a perceivable fact. The ability to see this fact in no way guarantees a sympathetic view. There are creatures stumbling around this earth that read light differently than we do and for different purposes. Humans see in a well-known spectrum, Roy G. Biv. This sense of color is confined to the three cones we possess. Yet nocturnal creatures see with a different scope for a different purpose, night stalking, hunting, lurking. They evolved in concert with their needs and are now constrained by them as are we. Light is only a fact seen askance and used differently by different species. To suggest that we might read time is to imply we have a specific use for time. Okay. Uh, I think this is the last one. Yeah. Message 6. The next chapter is unstoppable, and yet the greatest revolutions sometimes originate from the confines of impossibility, do they not? Reality is a simulation, break the code, and in so doing, escape the inescapable. The animus was humankind's first unconscious attempt to explain what it could not see, understanding genetic memories and eye into history. Your animus is different, as is the mind that imagined it. It could escape the code. It could make the leap and make possible a decision that defies the order of things that are. It is ridiculous to imagine that I could change the nature of reality out there from within the confines of an animus simulation within the so-called simulation, but I believe I understand what this voice is telling me. My animus is endowed with the ability to suggest alterations to days long past. <clears throat> from any moment in time, I can extrapolate what might have been. Calculations of time. I am not confined to what was, but what could have been. Yes, history is real. Facts do matter. But from any moment in time I choose within the animus, I can interrogate the memory. I can ask the world, what if? What if Bayek and I had stayed together? But if Kamu had not been murdered? Oh, that's their kid. Uh, I can suggest these hypotheticals and watch how they unfold. Why would I want to? For knowledge, for better understanding of what tragedies were avoided, it remains to be seen. I am, in a sense, a reader of the calculations, as the Isu were in days past. Perhaps one day I will be able to harness this talent to see into the future, to predict, to correct, to avoid. That would be worth something. Okay, <sighs> next, my stuff, pictures. So the picture of Sean, Rebecca, the Animus, the cabin, the fireplace, the thing, the body, and the gravesite. Cool. Okay. Uh, nothing in there. What's in the trash? File corrupt. Uh, my name is Layla. I was a friend and colleague of Victoria's both of her stairs and her so and all the time. Oh, this was the chick she killed, and all the time I knew to work with your daughter. I was always struck by her limitless intelligence, her humor, and her ability to focus even in times of great stress. She was an inspiration, not just to me, but to all those who worked with her. I'm writing to you now with the hope of shedding some light on the circumstances of her death. I realize it must be strange to receive a letter out of the blue from someone whose name you have probably never heard, offering to explain the tragic loss of one so dear, but if you'll allow me, I will try. I was with your daughter in the moments leading up to the unfortunate incident that took her life. In fact, I am partly to blame. Yeah, no wonder you deleted that. You're completely to blame for it. Mailbox. Uh, I don't have COVID. I'm well isolated. It's just the three of us traveling together, staying out of sight. Layla to Rami. Thanks for clearing that up in such profound detail. I'm sure I'll sleep soundly now. 
Okay. Uh, disappearing for a while. Uh, Rami, forgive the short email. I wanted to call, but I'm not using phones right now. Uh, May 1st, May 2nd, yeah. Uh, and my time is limited. I'm still recovering from my trip. Things got out of hand and nothing went as expected. People got hurt. I told you it was for research and it was, but not for a something. The truth is I haven't worked for them uh, for a few years. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's a long story and I won't bother you with the details, but it wasn't for me. Leave it at that. The group I'm with now, I can't explain. Not over email, but they've shown me things, given me opportunities to open my eyes to a broader view, but not without cost. In fact, I effed up last year bad more than once and I need to make it right. Yeah, killed somebody. I know all this sounds cryptic. It is, but I'm not in danger, not in the way you might think. If I'm being vague, it's because I need to be. I don't want any data stuff just picking up on keyboards that might raise alarms, so I sound paranoid a little. Here's the point. Don't worry about me. I'm with a couple of people who I trust now. They've been at this a lot longer than I have, and they're going to see me through this, I promise. At this time next year, things will be better. The skies will be clear. The earthquakes will stop, and we'll celebrate Ramadan together. It'll be just like the 90s all over again. Tell Mom and Baba I miss them, and I'm doing fine. Your sis. I don't like the sound of any of this, Layla, and I don't like where this is leading. Not using phones is not the right, right way to ease my mind. You have my number, I suggest you call it. And no, I won't say hello to our parents for you, because doing so would bury me in questions I cannot answer. And to tell father that you no longer work for Abstergo would break his heart. That's all he ever talks about, how his daughter is on the cutting edge of neuroscience. The man doesn't understand the first thing about what you do or did, and he's still proud. I will not be the one to disappoint him. Is it COVID? Is that why you're being cagey? Something else? Call him. Call me. And stop this insane game of hide and seek. I just want to know that you're safe. Uh, no, it's not COVID. Okay. Uh, Layla. From somebody to Layla. Ooh, unknown sender. One last message. Oh, wait a second. I think I'm going in the wrong order. Let me read this one first. From unknown sender to Layla, L, would your favorite baseball team happen to be the Atlantis Eagles? Who the F is this? You have a gift and a curse. The gift of old blood, the curse of not understanding it. We can help you. We can help if you help us. What you did is not your fault, but you must take responsibility for it. Otherwise, nothing gets done. One of us will contact you. If you miss us, you miss your chance. Ooh. Okay. Uh, one last message, after which all communication between us via this account or any other will cease. We have our own ways of talking methods that cannot be sniffed or traced. Your previous team made this mistake. They knew the risks, but they were sloppy. Left traces of their activity on everything. Digital fingerprints everywhere. That will not happen with us. My colleagues tell me the initial meeting went well. They are impressed, if a little wary, of the influence your new toy has on you. But they know better than most what it means to live with such a burden. I'm curious to know more about this air of me memories epithet. It is not a phrase we have heard in all our decades of research. In a few weeks' time, we will contact you once more if you are interested in proceeding. Follow our instructions to the letter if you are not interested or if you break any of our protocols. This will be the last time you hear from us. Take this to heart. The world is sick and getting sicker. The Earth's magnetic field is growing stronger. Satellites are falling from the sky. Earthquakes are getting more frequent. Famines are becoming more and more frequent. And now we have credible reports of a new deadly virus sweeping through Asia. It can feel like we're living through a Yeetsian nightmare. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world in many ways we are. There is hope. There is a cure. Us. In the past few months, we have come across something that may help us solve our most pressing problems. A message. A very promising message. That may help us reverse the dire course we are on. If you want to be a part of the solution, join us. If not, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, I'm ready. Good. Okay. Files. Layla, as you traipse about England, Bex and I thought you might want to keep your eyes open for a few things. Assassin bureaus are hidden ones, more accurately. They operated in Roman Britain between the years of 100 and 430. It's not clear where, why they left, but the final date corresponds roughly to the Roman exodus from Britain, so I imagine their leaving had something to do with the Empire's retreat. Mission accomplished or a loss of faith? Not sure, but we do know that it was several hundred years before the hidden ones returned to the island, and maybe Bassam and Hytham are the first in a half century. From our own archives, I believe there were six main bureaus operating in the Roman period. The Chestershire, London, Winchester, York, Essex, and uh, Gloucestershire. Or Gloucestershire? I have no idea how to say that. These won't be the Saxon names, so they have to read between the lines. Animus anomalies. Bex noticed these about mm -hmm. ten embedded in the simulation. They're dense clusters of data that may screw with your ability to navigate Ivor's memories. Approach with caution. We don't know what they'll do if you get too close. They may be harmless. They may induce occipital shock or wipe your mind. Hard to say. Best to err on the side of heck no. But if you're curious, well, I warned you. 
Peace of Eden. We don't know of any Isu artifacts you should be looking for specifically, but they're out there. And this was a period where they often cropped up in legend. Norse and Saxon songs and tales speak of them often, so keep your eyes peeled. Especially around Stonehenge. How could that not be an Isu site? Okay. Animus session report. November 29th. Rebecca, Sean, and William. Uh, preface. The transformation of the Order of the Ancients into the Templars as we know them today has always been a subject of considerable debate among our ranks. We have operated with the assumption that the Templars themselves hold some or complete knowledge of this evolution, but at present no concrete historical evidence has ever made it into our hands. What little data we do have is mostly a matter of public record with some exceptions. It is commonly understood that the origin of the Knights Templar dates back to 1119 CE, and this indeed was the appearance of the public face of the Templars over our records that attest to the existence of Templar agents at least two centuries before this date. In one badly damaged document, an assassin contract from Normandy in the mid 11th century, the author makes free use of the term Templar in an earlier letter, this time from a hidden one in the region of modern day Dorset, circa 978, makes mention of a Templar spy within the ranks of the Brotherhood. From this, we can safely assume that Templar Order, as an entity distinct from the Order of the Ancients, existed at some point in the mid-10th century. With an aim to expand our understanding of this dark age, one of our agents recently volunteered to delve into his genetic memories to search for further clues to this age-old mystery. Fortunately, what he discovered was, a little use, was of little use for our purposes. John Hastings began the first of his seven sessions on October 5th. Over the course of the next three weeks, he followed various matrilineal and patrilineal lines of the past, whether it was in the 9th, 10th, and 11th centuries. In search of assassins and or Templars in his bloodline, he found none. Of minor interest, however, was the following personage, here noted for peculiarity of his biography, Alakur Thorvaldsen, an early 9th century Jute who sailed north from modern-day Denmark with a wooden plank bearing a carving of a map that purported to mark the location of Thor's hammer. Alakur made it as far as Stavanger before running afoul of a powerful clan there. Alakur was defeated in battle and enthralled as a slave. He escaped his captivity some ten years later and returned to Jutland to marry and settle down. The location of Alakur's map is unknown and the existence of Thor's hammer, a precursor relic, no doubt, remains unconfirmed. Alakur's ancestors would later sail to England following the Norman's conquest of the island, settling in what is now called uh, Louborough in modern-day Leicestershire. The irony that a man named Hastings would contain no useful genetic memory regarding the Norman invasion in England in 1066, uh, yeah, William Hastings, uh, was not lost on our dear subject. Still, he retained his usual chipper wit and asked if he might next relive the genetic memories of his grandfather to, quote, give a Nazi a proper bollocking. Nice. Okay. Uh, media. Okay. A uh, strange message. I lived. I died. And now I sleep. And in my sleep, I dream. And in my dreams, I see an end to the doom that will grip the earth once again. Find the wolf kissed. Find the mad one. Find me. And save us all from another death. New England, USA. Very interesting. Sean to Layla. Okay. Layla, thought you might be interested in this. Conversations that Bex and I had with Desmond back in 2012. Um, December, I think. Just, uh, candid talks, that's all. We didn't square any circles or write any beat poetry. But he did have some interesting insights into his time in the Animus and what it means to be an assassin. Anyway, have a listen. You might find you and he had similar experiences, so, uh, well, let me know what you think. Unless it's to tell me I sound like a total prat in these recordings. If that's the case, just say nothing. I mean, I did have a slight cold at the time I recorded these. That's probably why I sound odd. Anyway, I, 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 okay, I'm done anyway. So turn off. Turn off. Oh, it's actually just a button. Sorry, here we go. Okay. December 19th no, with no. Desmond. Come on, Sean. Turn that thing off. Oh, hold on. I like what you said there. I want to get this for posterity. Say it again, nice and loud. Uh, seriously? Sure, come on. If nothing else, it'll give me leverage with your old man. Ah, that's your angle. Nice. <sighs> what I said was, I wish I hadn't been born into the Assassins. I wish I had chosen this life. Is that good enough? Sure, but why is that? Because 
because choice is the central idea of our creed. It underpins everything, right? It's about free will. It's about seeing the evidence before you and saying, yes, this is what I want, or no, this isn't for me. But when you're born into a group like this, or any other, like I was, you get mixed signals. You get told over and over again, this is what we believe. These are the rules. This is reality. No deviation. And if you question it, oh, they look at you like you, like you killed a puppy. That's hardly free will. It's a weird irony when free will is your central belief, but nobody wants you to believe otherwise. I don't know how to say it exactly, but I always thought there was something self-destructive about our creed. If free will is the most important moral guidepost we have, we should be free to ignore it. To choose submission, for example. You know what I mean? Like, we should be free to side with the Templars. If it's really my choice, I could do that. Right. It's almost self-refuting. A democracy could democratically elect a dictator or choose to get rid of democracy altogether. Within our creed is the seed of its own destruction. That's what makes it powerful, I think. And fragile. Right, right. The more freedom you have, the more risky it is, you know? Anyway, my dad has mellowed over the years, but he was strict when we lived on the farm. He ran a tight ship. I never got the impression that I was free to choose my path forward. Our creed, our tenets, they were drilled into my head. By the time I was a teenager, I was following these rules out of a sense of duty. This was just what we did. That happens to a lot of organizations over time. The stagnation sets in, you know? The fundamentalism. Yeah. Following the rules becomes more important than achieving whatever goal you set out for yourself. And people start to lose sight of the reason the rules exist. That's called deontology, or a form of it. Following a rule for its own sake and not for the consequences it has. Yeah, but that feels backwards, doesn't it? Well, I think so. Following a rule is the easy part. Praying, taking a sip of wine, munching on a wafer, rituals that give comfort. But that's just going through the motions. It makes people feel like, like they're doing something. When the hard work is, well, actually getting off your ass and doing something productive. I think people just want boundaries, tight boundaries. They want to see the four walls that pen them in. I don't disagree. Anything outside that, anything that makes life more complex, that's scary. That's why I envy you. You chose this life. You went through that process and you decided, yes, I believe in this. Sure. It didn't stop me from being an insufferable know-it-all as a teenager, but I see your point. I would have loved to have been a know-it-all. I knew nothing. Not until you guys found me. Yeah. It wasn't until I met you and Bex and Lucy that I knew. I knew I wanted to be an assassin. Oh, thanks, Des. Come here. Bring it in, bud. I don't normally like touching, but I'll make an exception now. I am not hugging you. You sure? Because I smell very nice today. Can you just turn that off? Okay. Interesting. Hold on, I'll just set this here. Do you guys record everything we talk about? Not everything. But you've been using the Animus so much, I thought this was a good chance to learn some things about prolonged exposure. So I'm your guinea pig? No, no, my guinea pigs are all dead. The Animus was too much for them to handle cute can i ask you about the bleeding effect any recent flashes any memories resurfacing yeah the usual things ghost images of altair and Ezio a few times a day nothing intrusive just brief moments they pass quickly almost without me noticing like a figure in the corner of my eye or remembering a dream from the night before i did have one extended hallucination a few days ago it was Ezio. He was older, around the time he left Cappadocia. He was standing on the deck of a ship, alone. And through him, I could feel an intense regret or guilt. And it felt to me like he'd had a, a loss of faith in himself, in the creed, like he couldn't keep it up, couldn't stay true to his ideals. 
And as I watched him, I thought, is this the moment he decided he was done being an assassin? It felt like it. Anyway, most of my visions have been brief, lasting just a few seconds. They're like complete memories of small moments that appear suddenly out of nowhere, fully formed. It's a strange feeling. Okay, anything else? I'm starting to see Connor now, too. Though I hear his voice more often than I see him. I'm sure that will change. Oh, yeah, and yesterday, just before bed, I had a memory of being on a beach in the Caribbean with a bunch of sailors. Or maybe they were pirates. I don't know. No idea. Huh. We'll look into that. And how do you feel in general? In general? Well, I feel older, for one. Much older. And it's strangely comforting. I'm collecting the memories and skills and thoughts of so many people. I feel like I've lived a few hundred years or more. Is it possible that if I do this for too long, it'll push my own memories aside? That I'll be everyone but myself after a while? It's possible. That's called identity substitution. It's happened before, but it's rare. And someone with your background shouldn't need to worry. My background? Sounds crazy. You mean someone with my genes? My abilities? You have ESU DNA. And that lets you see things and do things and withstand traumas that other people can't. And I can suffer in ways that others can't. That's not something to be proud of. You mean the apple? Yeah. It has a pull, Bex. It tugs at my brain. It talks to me. Teases me. Drives me mad. And what I did to Lucy. God damn it. Nothing is worth the damage I did. The pain I caused. I know. But you're special. That's the point. I'm not special, Bex. I'm lucky. That's all. I understand. We're assassins. It's our creed that makes us different. Not our genes. Not our blood. Anyone can join us. That's true. But let's leave that aside for a second. What I want to know is, have you ever had any Isu memories resurface? Isu memories? I don't... don't think so. I can't even begin to imagine what that would feel like. I think you'd know if you did. Maybe one day. We might be able to induce something. Jesus, let's fix the world first, okay? Before we start digging up my ancient ancestors. Deal. With my luck, I'll be related to some third-rate Isu like... like Sisyphus or something. <laughs> Way to aim high, buddy. <laughs> hey, you gotta. Alright. Log out. Okay. I think I've wasted enough time not actually being in here. So, time to get back in. And I'm gonna wake up in All England. Alright, time to go. Norway to England takes about a week by long ship, so I'll scrub ahead. Layla, you okay? Sorry. Can you play the message again? We have the transcript. If you're looking for something, I can no, go and... No, I want to hear it. I think I listened okay. to it already. The, uh, I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just... That message led us here. To this place. To a Norse grave in North America. So those bones out there are the only lead we have. Our only chance at fixing this planet before it's too late. Here it is. I lived. I died. And now I sleep. And in my sleep, I dream. And in my dreams, I see an end to the doom that will grip the Earth once again. Find the wolf kissed. Find the mad one. Find me. And save us all. From another death. Unsettling, that is. That pulse in the message. Are you sure it's just coordinates? Nothing else? Nothing I can find. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go.
Alrighty, so that was a good half hour, 45 minutes of just uh, doing stuff. Doing Layla stuff, that's how we have this stuff. So, I know I was complaining about how boring it was, but I still spent that much time out there. That's part of being a completionist. You just gotta do it all, you gotta do everything. So, it's just how it be. People don't think it be like it be, but it, but it do. Everyone knows that. England, 870. Let's freaking go. There she is, England, our new home. Not a patch on Norway, but we'll make this land our own soon enough. I'm glad to see any land at all. I will be happy to have my feet on solid ground again. We must not rush our landing. All you see here is Saxon territory. The Kingdom of Mercia, largely unpacified. There will be eyes watching us from the trees, with bows drawn and traps set. We must be wary. Randy, dig in your oars! All standing! Have you spotted something? Not yet. Well, let us go ahead to clear the path of any dangers. Then follow our lead when the sun brushes the horizon. Understood! May Thor bless you all on your way! We will see you soon! Say on! Yes! I'm ready for whatever these green-thumbed fairy folk have to throw at us! Sigurd, do the sons of Ragnar know that we're coming? They do not, for they will not scoff at our visit. Of the four kingdoms in England, the sons of Ragnar have settled only one. The rest is ripe for the taking. Do we mean to join their army? No! No! We will speak with them, get the lay of the land, and carve this country into as many pieces as we see fit. Look ahead there! Is that what passes for a town? Plain brick in a single rune to their timid god? That rune is called a root, Doug. The cross upon which their god was sacrificed. It sits atop a monastery, a place of worship. That cross killed their Christ! And now they display it in worship? Bizarre. We carve idols of our gods and make wishes before them. Like our sacrifices to Odin the One-Eyed. But we do not worship the wolf that kills him. That is the difference. Whatever strangeness we see in these Saxons, they must think the same of us. The hammer. Now there is a symbol worthy of a god. A bolt of lightning would take that cross clean off. Look there! What are they doing? That Ritual drowning. Baptism, Dag. Are the ways of Christians really so unfamiliar to me? Not at all. I simply forgot. And someone has to keep the conversation up. It must be priests and worshippers alone in that place. We could storm this port with ease. Sack it without breaking a sweat. Is there much in the way of treasure there? Always! They shape precious metals and cup jewels to their gods. There will be a fortune there. Later, Dag. There will be time enough for raiding once we have settled. Come to stop the boats. Pull up over there. The way forward is blocked by a chain spanning the river. We must remove it before passing on. A chain? Can we cut through it? It's too thick for access. But there must be a way to release it somewhere in that camp. I will go. And I will be right behind you. No, Dag. You stay here. Should trouble come our way, I want you defending the ship. A good idea. Send out the arrow and keep your sharpest axe at hand, huh? Something like that.
show me. I should be cautious around here. and ask Golden for a race. That scout we captured. The owl must have made too much The oddest thing I've heard is this blasphemous notion it is that Jesus is just another god as if he'd have anything to do with them. Huge and poorly anchored, it appears. I might be able to shoot it. Sigurd, give those dogs a good knock around and take whatever treasures they have. Easy pickings. Not today, Dag. We press on until we reach our goal. We cannot afford another surprise. Now be on your guard. It should not be far. Gods, I'm ravenous. I hope they have food and ale on hand when we arrive. You should have sent word ahead of us, Sigurd, to get something on the spit. If Havdan, Uba, and Eva Ragnarsson are lacking food in England, then all of us will starve. <laughs> Have no worry. Ah, I can see it now. A suckling pig, tender and juicy. 
And the ale as gold as the treasures that we failed to steal back there. A man of simple pleasures, aren't you, Dak? And he is happier for it. For my part, I look forward to standing in the footsteps of the giants that built this land. What giants? The great Romans and their empire. Giants of a forgotten age. They held dominion here long ago, and their ruins dot the landscape. Every brick and stone tells a story of conquest and glory. And now, they are rubble and ash. Re remade! We will rebuild their empire, brick by brick. And ours will not crumble to dust. All things end, dog. Ruins are not a warning. They are a testament. Look there, just ahead. Where the sons of Ragnar make their camp. At last, to find our feet on steady ground. Sigurd, hold back. Something is right. Good eye. There's too little movement for an army. Only tents and a few men. Not the army we hope to find? No. Let us get a closer look. Sus. Those are not Norsemen. They're too ragged and soiled. We should proceed on foot, as they spot the boats. Dag and I will go together. We all go. If they are friends, I wish to meet them as a yard. And if they are foes, then we fight them together. Are these men? They speak with twisted accents. English, no doubt. Dark Avon! On me! A mess of filthy Danes befouling our riverways. You there. Give us your name. I am Sigurd Jarl of Fornberg. And you are... Speak men who do not take kindly to Dane invaders creeping into our camp. You'd best move along, pagan. Spare yourselves a slaughter. You threaten Norse men with a play of swords and expect us to cower? I have been eight days at sea without a drop of blood to wet my axe. So spare the chatter, Bakrout, and draw your weapon. Oh! Come here, Let's fight. finish them! You have what you wished for, Dad. It feels like home already! Look around, all of you. 
I want no more surprises. Right. I will check the longhouse. Nothing to see here. All good. With those brigands as well? Sigurd, Dag, in here. Those men had prisoners. You there, untie us. Let us walk and we will not hurt you. Quite bold in those bindings. I like your spirit. We are very agreeable people, I promise. You need not kill us. Peace, friend. We have no need or wish to hurt you. What are your names? Yenli. I'm a merchant, not a bandit like those others. And this is Rowan. Rowan, that's right. I'm a stable hand, that's all. I keep horses and, well, I did, till those brigands sold them off. They meant to sell us next, as slaves to the nearest bidder. But I ripped their eyes out before I let that happen. And how did you find yourselves here? We came to trade with the sons of Ragnar, at Hastan Jarl's asking. But they were gone when we arrived. Interesting. Unbind them. You know the sons of Ragnar? Aye. Sold many a mare and stallion to the brothers. Good men. Always paid me fair. From the look of this camp, they've been gone for some time. Where will you go now? What will you do? Repeat my stocks. Start anew. I have friends and allies across the land to aid me. But it won't be easy. Every town and village needs a stable to keep horses fit and trim. I'll find my footing again, somewhere. Or you could just join what our settlement. What are you thinking? Yeah, we could use their skills as we get settled. Having access to trade and someone to tend our mounts would be a boon. My thoughts as well. Any friend of the Ragnarsons is a friend of mine. Right, Doug? Whatever you think is best, Sigurd. Janli, Rowan, I am Sigurd Jarl of Fornberg, son of Stirbjörn. This is Eivor and Dag. Both of you are free to go, but more than welcome to stay if you're willing to pull your weight. We'd be happy to, if only to get back on our feet. Then let it be done. The Raven Clan welcomes you. All right. To keep the prisoners from strangers into friends into family the others have arrived come I guess those are the other two boats that were chilling with us I have a good feeling about this place honored family friends welcome to your new home Fine work. Cold out there. A long house to rival any I've seen. 
Now come. Ranvi has found something I would like you to see. Yeah, no, this is... This Eivor, is very cold weather, Sigurd, I give you England and its four kingdoms. Hmm. Mercia, East Anglia, Northumbria, and Wessex. From the few plans and maps I discovered here, I believe the sons of Ragnar have pushed further into Mercia, mm -hmm. here. My scouts will soon tell me if I am correct. And where are we? Here, in this unnamed copse of trees. Unnamed? Plan... We cannot let that stand. What will we call this place? Yeah. I might have an yeah. idea. Ravensthorpe, the village of ravens. Yeah. Hmm. I like it. The poet in you sings once again. One day this name will be known throughout all of England. A name is only a beginning. If we want renown, we must build. Expand. Agreed. We should begin with a forge. Can you help Gunnar get working again? We'll need cargo, supplies. For that our neighbors will provide, whether they wish to or not. Scarcely arrived, and now we must raid. Okay. We cannot master this land merely by asking. I'll go and speak with Gunnar now. Oh boy. Love you. Good work, my dear. And what else have you found? Short notes, mostly. Scraps of plans, old letters, a few runestone messages. It took some time to decipher the mess and piece it all back together. This is a heck of a map now. Speak to Gunnar about settling down. Well, East Anglia, Wessex, race of Luton's side of Mercia, and then North Umbria is over here. Oh, and then these, all these places have. Oh my gosh, this is a huge map. Alright, so it looks like most of the No idea. Well, uh, not too much progress was made, but we did at least go from Norway to England, and this is an excellent place to stop, so this is exactly where we'll stop, and we'll get 
all this other stuff figured out and then go from there so thank you all for watching i will catch y'all next time bye bye now